So I was talking with my brilliant sister friend, Aaron Haynes of the 19th with the asterisk on Wednesday night, the evening after Kyle Rittenhouse tearfully testified at his murder trial in Wisconsin, like a mini Brett Kavanaugh. And we were talking about how this case reminds us so much of the George Zimmerman trial, in which Zimmerman, an adult, was acquitted on July 13th, 2013, of murdering a teenager, 17-year-old Trayvon Martin. Much like the Rittenhouse case, the Zimmerman case was fundamentally about American vigilantism and whether it is legal in America for a person not in law enforcement to take it upon themselves to arm themselves with a gun and meet out what they view as justice in the name of self-defense and investigating property crime. According to the laws maneuvered into place by the NRA, that is indeed legal in America, statistically mainly if you're white. European history on the American continent from 1619 to today is an almost unbroken record of vigilantism in the name of defending property rights, whether that property was human and African and enslaved, or in the form of wives or daughters who had no individual property or voting rights of their own, and whether or whether it was physical land. America is a country formed by men who threw off the European kings to become little kings of their own with land and slaves and women under their charge. And whether it was the colonizers' merciless enforcement of their own made-up authority to forcibly seize indigenous people's land, often wiping out entire tribes, or the fugitive slave laws that authorized any white man to forcibly recapture enslaved people who broke for freedom, or the religious fanatics who claimed the right to try and burn at the stake any woman deemed to be a witch, or the more than 4,000 lynchings from the Redemption era to Emmett Till and the massacres from Elaine, Arkansas to Wilmington, North Carolina to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and on and on and on. Any white man who claimed a crime had occurred felt completely entitled to enforce the law himself, sometimes with a gang of his friends. And the best part? These sacred laws almost never applied to these men. They were virtually immune from the law themselves. American media has even glorified the white male vigilante from Steve McQueen to Clint Eastwood and John Wayne, especially in Westerns. It gets trickier for some folks when the vigilante is named Django or Nat Love. But given that vigilantism is so steeped in American culture, should we really be surprised that a 17-year-old Proud Boys fan believed that he had the perfect right to cross state lines and protect property with the AR-15 he got because he thought it was cool? Or that Zimmerman believed it was his duty to investigate property crime by following a 17-year-old kid and shooting and killing him even after police told him to stand down? These two teenagers, Kyle Rittenhouse and Trayvon Martin, exist on entirely opposite sides of the American legal system and of Black Lives Matter, right? The, the white kid with the AR-15 who shot three white Black Lives Matter protesters, Fox News types, and apparently Tulsi Gabbard, view him as someone who could be their son clean-cut and innocent, maybe even heroic. While the black kid, who was holding candy and iced tea in his hands for his little brother, and for whom the hashtag Black Lives Matter was born, not so much. He must have been a thug, right? And everybody who's willing to pay attention knows what I just said is true. It should be no surprise that in America, three white alleged vigilantes believe that they had the right to enforce the law against property crime on an unarmed black jogger who hadn't committed any crime, Ahmaud Arbery, and they'll probably get away with it, too. Or that hundreds of Trump supporters believe they could take it upon themselves to right the so-called wrong Trump believed had been committed against him in the election by black and brown voters in key states by getting him installed by force, by invading the Capitol with a noose, defecating on the grounds, flying the treason flag, and attacking police. Or that Texas men who oppose abortion believe the law should authorize them to collect a bounty on women who legally obtain an abortion under the soon-to-be defunct Roe v. Wade. Because in these men's minds, they are the law, the only law that matters in America. And you want to know why they think that? Because the law keeps telling them so. 